to go. Hey guys, hope you're all okay. You join me on this lovely sunny Sunday morning. I'm just leaving Cambridge. Uh, I'm gonna head out to some back roads for a little chat on my CB1000R, which I haven't ridden for about a month because the weather has been horrendous. And I've now got a new uh, bike, as in cycle. I've got an e-mountain bike, which I'm using for work. Uh, so I've been using that, keeps me fit and it's only eight nine miles a day but it keeps me fit and i'm really enjoying it so i haven't been using this and from tonight it's going to drop down to below zero meaning the gritters are going to be out salt on the roads and i'm not going to use this too much i will if i need to but because i'm now cycling to work it's uh this isn't used as much so i haven't been out on it <laughs> but it's just so nice to get on it feels feels superb Right guys, I'm going to stop in a few miles and just have a chat about the bike. And as you can see from the title of the video, I'm just going to chat over the things I like and don't like about the bike. So any of you guys that are interested in purchasing a CB1000R, you know, it might be of interest to you. Might not. You know, this is just a personal thing. It doesn't mean the things I don't like that you won't like. It's completely personal. Uh, the service has been done about 80 miles ago, which was about a month ago. And... Uh, as I said, I haven't really ridden it since. I'm not going to thrash the nuts off this too much. I don't anyway, but I'm going to take it a little bit easier to about a thousand miles and not completely hammer it. Uh, so I thought while the sun was out, it'd be good to just get out and have a chat about the bike, about my likes and dislikes uh, and how I feel about it. Oh, well, I remember, I've got an apology to make to Honda UK. I wrote up the customer services... Uh, department and had a rant about my tyres that why they were made in 2012 and there's two dates on the tyres saying 2012 blah 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 uh, and as someone else did mention in the uh, in the comments it's not that date you need to look for it's a different date uh, I put a picture now of the thing you need to look for to see what age your tyres are it's this it's a mixture of letters and numbers and the last two numbers are the year the tyre was made. So yeah, my tyres are made in 2019. After all that, me going, oh, the tyres are old tyres, blah, 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 whatever. They're still not brilliant tyres. I don't care what Honda say. Yeah, they're made in 2019, but they're made in a Dunlop factory in Japan by Koshimiki Sisi or something, something like that. So they're not... There's still a car up my arse and I'm doing the speed limit on now so they're not made by dunlop in uh, france they're made by some weird factory in japan obviously honda are just cheap skating it where they make their tires and a lot of japanese manufacturers seem to do that so to round off not going to rant about it anymore my tires are uh, new tires made in 2019 not uh seven years ago like i thought they were so that's good news. St they're still not the best tyres around. I'll probably go for some Metzella M7RRs or some Bridgestone S22s. Stay there, van. That's what I'll probably go for. Probably just done a couple of thousand miles. I'll change the tyres. So just quick apology to Honda UK. Because you were right, my tyres were not made in 2012, they're made in 2019. Although they are a crap version of a Dunlop tyre, which is still poor that Honda fit those crappy tyres and not proper Dunlops to their uh, to their bikes. Or proper Bridgestones. Anyway, let's forget about that now. I'll soon get these swapped out at some point. Then I went to Ducati Cambridge to watch the launch of the new bikes on the, on the big screen there. It was brilliant. Uh, and I did like the look of the uh, V4 Street Fight. It does look very cool, and it's not as expensive as I thought it would be. The base model is only probably a little bit more than a tricked-up Super Duke car with an Akrafovich pipe. So the standard V4 Street Fighter 
isn't the silly money. I think the S model was pushing about 19 grand, I think if I remember. But it does look brilliant. So next step is to go to the bike show and have a look around it, have a sit on it and see what I think. And then it might be time to put a deposit on one. I think they said at Ducati Cambridge, I think Will said, I think their order book's pretty much full till June, July next year. So anyway, I'm not in a rush to get one because I'm loving this little bike, but that is potentially what I'm going to do, V4 Street Fighter. It's definitely on the radar now. It looks superb and it's got 200 and, was it 206 horsepower as standard? You can turn it, get up to about 220 when you fit a full system to it, it's bonkers. Absolute bonkers. But that, that system, <laughs> that crap system is four grand. It's like, uh-uh. That's a lot of money. Right, I'm going to stop down here. Wait for this car to come through. Come on, mate, you can do it. You're not in a bus. Right, let's just put over here. I'm not in the way of anyone. It's a bit of a dead-end road. Right. So guys, I'll get off the bike, I'm gonna have a chat about what I like and don't like, and then I'll get back on the bike and have another chat about the bike, and anything I've missed out, I'll uh, I'll go over it then. Cool, right. See, the things I love about this bike, I love the looks of it. It's It looks absolutely brilliant. It, 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 there's nothing really like this on the road that looks like this. They haven't really copied any other bike. I think this looks brilliant, in my opinion. Absolutely superb. So the looks are wicked. Love the looks of it, compared to some other naked bikes. The build quality is absolutely superb. I said before, there's not many plastic parts on this bike, only a handful. Everything's aluminium and, and all machined in such a high quality way. You know, even the brake reservoir looks, looks nice. So, yeah, the looks I love, the quality is superb. A couple of things I didn't like when I got the bike, the exhaust. I didn't mind the look of the exhaust, the tailpipe, but it was so quiet, it, was, it sounded like a scooter. It was ridiculously quiet. So I changed it in for the uh, Termi pipe, just because it's, well, I saved about two or three kilos, and it looks, to me, it looks better anyway, and it sounds so much better. I will do another video of when the baffles are in and baffles are out. I've not got to that yet. I've not been obviously on the bike for a while. So that's coming probably in the next video. I'll do that. Uh, and the rear tail unit that was on over the tyre, which you saw in my... I put a link to it now in the video that I did when I first was on it and I changed all the stuff on it. So you can check that out now. I fit the uh, RNG, or well, the dealer fitted the RNG tail unit. So didn't like the tail unit, didn't like the exhaust. I like the look of the exhaust, as I said, but not the sound. It sounded awful, and it was, it was a heavy lump. Uh, visually, what else? I don't get the, the throttle lead here. That's Honda, that's a bit of an afterthought that you've gone and put that there. You know, my finger sometimes gets, well, hang on, I can't really show you, but my hand's on there, with gloves on, I sometimes knock into it. Not always, but it just seems that they haven't really thought about, it's the, obviously a throttle mapping lead. Uh, for the different maps of the throttle. It's just like, Honda, what are you doing? What, what is that? Why, why is that hanging down there? I know it's got to be loose so that when you look, move the throttle back and forth, it has to be baggy so it's got some play like that because it's tight when it goes back, but it just seems a little bit weird. No other bike seems to have that that I've, that I've ever ridden. So, oh, another thing that I didn't like was the levers. They looked like they were off some 1980s uh, motorbike. They were crap. So I've changed them to these lovely ones that are adjustable because the clutch lever wasn't even adjustable so that was ridiculous and obviously the mirrors have gone because uh, they look stri well they look crap i've got some bar ends that i'm gonna have to order but these little mirrors are doing the job for now let's get back on the bike and have a another chat i want to chat about the brakes uh throttle response uh, suspension stuff like that but it's better probably if i'm on the bike rather than uh, just walking around it cool okay guys bear with me a minute i'll just get back get my gear on and we'll get back on the bike I'm just going to mention about the e-mountain bike that I've got. Ga My bro's got one too. Uh, if, you, if you watch the Wales videos that we did recently uh, on the enduro bikes, you'll see my mate, the Bigs man's got a uh, specialised uh, Levo turbo as well. See, I think Bigs is going to upgrade his uh, Levo to a Canevo. But I know you lot of you guys are not going to be interested in, in the videos we do of the, on the e-bikes, but 
we're hopefully going to do lots of videos uh, at White Park Wales and stuff like that that's our plan anyway because around here it's so flat it's not very exciting at all uh, riding wise so we're going to try and have some days out at, in Wales and stuff like that on the e-mountain bikes oh bloody hell just on my nice piece of road I just have a couple of horses let's go by pull the clutch in right let's give this beast a bit of a thrash Give this a good thrash in. Bloody hell. Once you get into the high up revs, so fast. Yeah, it is quick. Bloody hell. Bloody hell, I'm only about 8,000 revs. Christ, it is quick. Oh, this bike's brilliant. I've only got it in standard mode as well. I don't often put it in sport mode. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, it's, it's so, so quick. Yeah, this hasn't got the low down shove of uh, probably my Monster had, a, had more torque lower down. The torque on this bike is a lot higher in the rev range. So you have to wind it up a little bit, but you get used to that. It's just a different sort of engine, being obviously being a four-cylinder, not a two-cylinder. But it's God, man, it's it's just it's way way quick enough for the road. Bloody hell, it's fast. Right, let's chat about a few things before I get some speed up, and you won't be able to hear me. Right, the suspension on this, the front isn't too bad it's a little bit flighty when you when you give it a handful the front goes a little bit light but that's not a big deal but the rear shock is way too soft it's too softly sprung I'm only about 70 something kilos I don't know what I weigh about 11 stone what's that about 70 75 kilos not sure I haven't messed around with the preload or anything on it I haven't farted around with that I just left it alone but on 95 percent of the roads I ride on the suspension is absolutely fine when Gaz followed me before on his street triple, he's saying how much how much give there is in the rear suspension. It looked like my rear number plate was hitting my tyre. But it's not a big deal. I'm not going to mess around with it. It's just how this bike is. You know, it's not got a set of Olins on it or anything like that. Nothing fancy. But for me, it's fine. So yeah guys, so the rear suspension isn't brilliant. It's not as good as, nowhere near as good as the Olin's on my 1200 Monster. That was just sublime, that was so good. But, you know, oh my glove, glove's coming undone. Do you know what? It's pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, front wall lifted up a little bit then. I hope there's no floods around here. Shouldn't be. So guys, yeah, unless you test ride one, depends how heavy you are, I guess, to how the, how the rear, uh, how the rear reacts. For me, it's fine, but just to warn anyone, yeah, if you test ride one of these, see how you feel with the rear shock, because it's definitely a bit cheap and a bit soft. But I'm not going to go on track days, I don't ride like a complete nutter. So for me, it's fine, but some people might not like it. It's just a little warning. This video is to help people who might be interested in this bike. That's what I'm trying to do, just give you a picture of what I like and don't like. So, I don't like the rear shock, but it's okay, if that makes sense. It's not terrible. In any, any way, shape or form, it, it's fine. It's completely livable uh, for what I use it for, no problem at all. The brakes are absolutely superb. Like, 
amazing. The best brakes I've ever, ever tried on a bike. Oh God, the brakes. Just try them then. They're, they're, oh, they're so, uh, they're just so progressive. They're not snatchy. They're not, are they Nissan? Nis what are they? No, Tokiko. They're Tokiko, not, not Nissan. And they're, oh, they're amazing. They're the best brakes I've ever, ever had on a bike bar the V4 Panigale that, I, that I've ridden. They're amazing. Absolutely amazing. So I love the brakes. Better than my 1200 uh, Monster S brakes. Absolutely superb. So love the brakes. Absolutely love the brakes. Uh, the clutch as well. The clutch is really light. Like, really, really light. Lovely. So the clutch is, the feel of the clutch is spot on. Love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, it's very wet in the shade here, to be a little bit careful. Right, love the brakes, clutch is brilliant. Right. Oh, what I'm, oh I forgot, what I, what I was on about the suspension, I should have mentioned the ride quality. I think the ride quality is about right. It's a good mixture. It's firm, but not too firm. It's just right. But obviously that's to do with the soft rear shock, why the ride's quite soft, I guess. So it's, it's not, you know, it's give and take, I guess. Uh, quick shift to down blipper. Once you're giving it the beans, I'd say out of the first couple of gears, and you're higher in the rev range, the, uh, well, the quick shifter and down blipper are brilliant. Really, really smooth. I'd say even better than my Monster 1200S. Really, really good. So yeah, guys, if you're on one of these and you're in town, just, just use the clutch. It's a lot smoother. A lot, lot smoother. So yeah, higher in the rev range. Uh, get out the first sort of three gears, I'd say, maybe two gears, and then it's absolutely fine. See, just especially first to second, uh, I think most quick shifters are crap. Uh, and like the down blip, when you go from second to first, it's always going to be a bit jerky. So... Yeah, gearbox is brilliant on this. Absolutely, ah, oh, it's a peach. Superb. Along with the engine, which I haven't really spoke about, but the engine, uh, the power delivery, everything on it, I love. I can't fault any of that at all. Just keep away from using the quick shifter down blipper in the lower gears, that's all I would say. Right, the riding modes. I can, I can change them quite easily. You've got, oh, just hit a pothole. You've got user, rain, standard, and sport. So right guys, let's just put it into sport mode. Uh, and the throttle was definitely, yeah, it's jerky. You've got to be giving it the beans to be in sport mode with the throttle, then it's fine. I normally keep it in standard. It seems to be the best balance of everything, especially in town. So yeah, it's not, the smoothest throttle response ever even in rain mode it's still a little bit harsh and I think in in rain mode and standard mode it, it dulls the power down in the first is it the first couple of gears I can't remember someone have to put me right on that I'm not sure but I normally just keep it in standard uh, and don't bother with sport because even putting it along here look unless you're giving it the beans it is it's very snatchy I don't even know where I am. I've no idea where I am. Oh, it's hit a big hole. So yeah, as an all-round mode, I reckon uh, standard mode's the best. It's definitely, definitely got a, a softer throttle response. And for putting around town, or even if you're giving it a bit, I think it's just in standard mode, it's better. I, I, I definitely prefer it. So guys, yeah, the LCD screen. I like it, it sort of suits the bike. It's not got, a, it's not a fancy colour screen, like most bikes. It's lagging a bit behind in that respect, but it actually suits the bike. I don't mind it at all. I've got used to it. It's got everything on there that I need. It's got a fuel gauge, got a clock. It's got a gear shift indicator. I like it. Yeah, I do like it. 
suits the bike. I'm not worried about it being not being the fanciest this or the fanciest that. It's not it's not like that for me. I'm not bothered about the big colour screens. Right, I reckon I need to go left here. Even though I know I know where I am now. Yes, I know where I am. And some of you guys might not know. I might I don't know if I mentioned it before. I had an S thousand R, a white one. Uh, if you go back in my playlist, you'll probably see a link to to the bike. Uh, this pretty much feels like an S1000R, but without the electronic suspension. This has got not quite as much power, but this feels a little bit like that. But this seems to have a little bit more character than that. That was a bit Germanic, a bit sterile, very fast and sort of just very, yeah, did everything really well. I think, yeah, as an all-round bike, I think I prefer this to an S1000R, but again, until you go and ride one, you don't know. It's impossible to know unless you ride a bike. You can listen to me all day, go on about, oh, I like this better than that. It means nothing until you ride the bike to see how you feel, because I'm only five foot seven. You might be six foot four. This bike might feel really cramped to you. I, I don't know. But yeah, this is one of the best all round bikes I've ever had for fun. And as you'll see now, I'm in third gear at 4,000 revs. This is fast. to ride this bike and say it isn't fast because it bloody is just got to get it wound up a little bit into the higher rev range oh, let's get the gearboxes ace down to third even second look whoa the front goes so light this has a little, a little shimmy I've, it's never wagged its head to, like my Monster 1200S used to do. That used to get a bit of fl really flighting, give a little bit of a head, uh, a bit of a head shake. This hasn't done that to me yet. If you ride like a lunatic, like a proper nutter, go mad everywhere, then this isn't the bike for you. This is a bit of a bit of a cruiser, naked, fun, fast when you want it to be, good all-round bike. It's not as focused as a bloody KTM Super Duke car. You know, or an MT-10, I know that. But that isn't what I was after. I was after something I can use every day for work. And it's a bit of fun. This bike's brilliant. But get out there and test ride one. But I love it, I think it's, it's ace. Absolutely ace. Oh, well, another thing, I think my service was about 100 and, 105 pounds or something for the oil change. Uh, There's nothing else to do on it. It was, there was nothing else wrong with it. Oh, I've just realised, I've got cold hands and I've got heated grips. Oh yeah, what a dick, oh what a dickhead. I've just ridden about 20 miles and my fingers are freezing and I forgot I had heated grips. Oh my God, what a moron. Oh God, they're probably so cold my hands now. I think it's about six, seven degrees. It's not very warm at all. Hey yeah, guys, the heated grips are actually really hot. Some of, the, some of them you get are aftermarket ones. They fit at the dealership, the R&G, and they're, they're rubbish. These actually are, oh, they're warm already. Oh, lovely. Oh, my, my body's warm, but getting cold hands, it isn't very nice. So, hit your grips, another positive. Oh, no, it's a horse. It's a horsey day. Horsey day today. Right guys, I'm heading back now. I'm sure I've, I've forgotten to mention something about this bike that I like or don't like. I can't remember, but all in all, it's brilliant. It's not silly money. I think I got it for, I think just under, under 11 grand. And I've got an 0% finance deal on it, tiny deposit. You know, that's the problem with the V4 Street Fighter. You've got to get a massive deposit together, but I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. I'm not even thinking about that yet. Right guys. I'm just heading home now. As I said, I'm sure I've forgotten something that I like or don't like about this bike. I can't remember everything. I tried my best anyway. Any questions, give us a shout and I'll answer them as best I can. Uh, we're off to the bike show at the NEC in Birmingham on the 24th. It's the last day of the bike show. 
So any of you guys see myself or my bro Gaz walking around or some of the other guys, just come and uh, just come and say hi. And we'll have a little chat. But it's, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the Street Fighter. The V4 Street Fighter. It's definitely on the, uh, on the cards to have a little look at. Looking forward to it. Definitely looking forward to it. Person and have a little sit on it. And it might like, something some I'll get like in a year's time. I don't know. We'll see. We we shall see. You see how I feel. But I am loving this little bike. It's just awesome. Look, six, five, four, three, two, go. Holy moly! <laughs> Lovely. Brilliant gearbox. Superb. Right. Showed some interest in the uh, in the street fighting. Oh yeah, that looks lovely. So wouldn't be surprised if he gets one as well. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Right, we'll head back through town because there's roadworks the other way. Any of you guys that haven't seen the latest off-road videos that we did from Wales, which was a month ago, I'll put a link to the uh, playlist now. That was brilliant. We had such a laugh in the barn. It's superb, proper laugh. Uh, we got soaked, but it, it didn't matter. We weren't we weren't worried. Get wet, you get wet. <gasps> get out of the way, bus. That uh, bus was pulling over into my lane. He probably just didn't see me. So guys, yeah, the next vid I'll do on this will be the exhaust one uh, with the baffles in, the baffles out uh, to see uh, the difference in sound. We're going to try and have a weekend away in Wales. Uh, probably, oh, I don't know, it could be any time of the year. I don't know if it's cold, as long as it's dry. Because in the winter when it's cold and wet, it's just, it's awful. So... Yeah, we, we probably won't plan it to the last minute. We'll go up on a Saturday after work, stay the night in a hotel within an hour of where we ride in, in Wales, and then have a day riding on the Sunday, and then come back. That's our plan. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that might not work out, but that's what we're going to try and do anyway. That could be, uh, that could be good fun. We shall see. But as I said, I... I I video anything, you know, with the, the e-mounting bikes that we're going to start doing videos. I need to get a chest mount for uh, for the GoPro for that. It's the best way of, uh, definitely the best way of filming on a mountain bike with the chest mount. If we go to Bike Park Wales, I've got a full face helmet I can use. I've got all my motocross body armour. I'll be wearing that as well. Because I know I'm going to fall off quite a lot. Because uh, we will. That's just inevitable. But yeah, the videos might be a bit random, but that's what, what I do. I don't always put videos of motorbikes. It can be anything within reason. Hope you enjoyed this vid. Any questions as ever, give us a shout, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.